G'day, this is BLX here, and welcome back to Buzz Aldrin's Space Program Man Manager. As we prepare to test our ERR lander, our Langley Light lander, in lunar orbit. Let's go for it. So this is launch number one. This will be putting our transfer stage into orbit. So we'll be using this transfer stage to essentially push our vehicle all the way to the moon. Push our payload all the way there. Okay, that's up. Now we've got our crew, which is our crew, and it has the Langley Light Lander and a few other bits and pieces attached to this particular craft. And we'll be putting this one up on our more reliable Saturn V. More reliable, more powerful, but more expensive. Alrighty, we're in orbit. Alrighty, we're in lunar orbit. Now from here we'll test out our Langley light lander. Make sure the thing works. You can see now we're, we're quite significantly higher than we used to be. I think we're down in about 82 or 85 when we first began. The craft is much more reliable now. We've tested and we've knocked out all the flaws. And we're looking good. Problem. <laughs> you look at it. you pay sixty two thousand for a two point three percent boost. As you get later on in this game, it just these are just not worth it all. And we've made it down. Can our ground crew actually find them? 
Yep, they found them. Alrighty. Successful test in orbit of the moon. Which means the equipment is as ready as it's going to be. Gemini EOR, lunar orbital flight, and lunar flyby. Plus we've effectively done the same thing. Okay. Are these people done? They have been our crude spacecraft people. Alrighty. Yeah, actually I'll just leave them there. Yep, so we can't R&D any higher. Max reliability is actually 100%, so it is possible to test this vehicle up to 100% reliability. And so there's a few things that can get that high. The rover can actually be R&D'd up to 100%. Oh no, that's 100% difficulty. Okay. So the, this rover is the most difficult thing to R&D in the game. Nothing else is as difficult. That's why we're only getting 0.9% per quarter. So there's actually a few things. It looks, I've actually not paid much attention to this. But it does look like by testing it in orbit, you can get most of the craft at least up to 100%. And if, for example, the Gemini spacecraft is 100%. Nothing's actually going to break on it. It's only through user error that something will go wrong. So obviously because our people are not trained to 100%, and they, can never, no, they never can be, uh, something could still theoretically go wrong. But it won't be from the spacecraft failing, it'll be from our people. So that's interesting, I've not paid attention to that before. Ah uh, well. In the meantime, nobody else is working on these. So, let's train our people in space probes. Because that's all we're going to be doing from here on out. Alrighty, what we're doing now is our EOR. No overview. Looks like they've um <laughs> they've forgotten to program that in. What's well, a bit boring? Doesn't matter, we are now going to do our EOR. Like these approaches to man lunar landing. Da, da, da. So we're using our space tug, which is not being displayed here, but it's our um a Gina docking thing. And the Langley lander. More economic but risky. So this is a much cheaper program to do, but it is more risky than the other ones we've attempted. Probably because there's multiple launches and more moving parts and chance for things to go wrong. But so this rocket is now 100% reliable. It will never ever fail unless one of our operators makes a mistake on it. In that case, I'll keep practicing with our other one. We'll put our people on the again on the more reliable one. I think we're ready for it. Our final moon landing. Oh, Oberdorfer. Hmm. You know what? We are going to send our least qualified people to the moon. We are equal opportunity. You may be useless at your job, but we will send you. In the meantime, I think we're also going to check out the multi-probe. Venus atmospheric probe. Um, nah, not a chance. Not 
chance at all. In that case, off we go. Looks like the multi probe is 60%, so 8.7. It's getting there gradually. It'll take a couple more turns. Let's keep watching our sun probe tick along. Again, not particularly uh, spectacular to watch. And for the most part, I will skip these. But just the fact that the reliability is so low, if something does come up, I would like to be able to tiger team it. Another 1.7%. And off we go. This is our moon landing. I will shut up with this one again, as with all moon landings. Uh, it's a 36 step probe. <laughs> That's a lot. So two launches, a, uh, a docking, and quite a few steps around the moon. So I will see you at the other side. Success or failure. Let's see how we go. Wish me luck. Stage is reporting ready for launch. T minus 20.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the moon. That is, off to the moon three times in three different ways we've made it. We've completed our Gemini EOR lunar landing. Budget increase, not that I particularly need it, but thank you for the money. It does help offset the 62,000 mega bucks I spent for a 7% increase. President very pleased with my current performance. La, 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 la. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Again, keep away from Watergate. Alrighty. Well, it looks like we have completed to the moon in three different ways. What I'll be doing from here on out, I will be completing the Apollo mission with uh, the Type J, which is a surface landing with a rover. So we will be going back and doing the later Apollo missions once I have that rover up to spec, which won't be too long. And I also plan on doing a, at least a single probe to every single planet that is available. So we're in the process of completing off the Sun probe. Our Venus probe is being d designed. Our Mars probe is being designed. When either one of these are done, we will unlock Jupiter, Saturn and Mercury. And we'll be able to do the probe flybys for those. I believe this one takes about 16 turns to get out to. So you might see me skipping a couple out of the way there we go oh, 21 seasons, my mistake it takes, <laughs> takes a very long time to get out there there is a flyby here, Jupiter flyby and out to Saturn Yeah, this is quite some time away. So I will be doing these in the future episode when I find the time. But uh, I consider this LP essentially done. We've gone to the moon in all three different ways that this game thought that NASA envisioned. We had the traditional Apollo program where you launch up a very large package, a payload, get my words right, launch a very large payload. That payload then separates into a lander which drops down to the moon. You have your two astronauts on the moon with the third one up in orbit in the command module. And then the lander then takes off, rendezvous with the uh, command module, and then you return to Earth. The second one was the Gemini direct ascent. We essentially use a very large rocket to put a very large payload onto the surface of the moon. That very large payload then gradually strips down and launches itself directly back to the Earth. And we got two people on the moon with that one. And then the final one was the Gemini EOR, where we put a we put two launches up, we put a payload up, and we launched a transfer module, which then docked in Earth orbit, transferred to the moon, 
and then from that payload module we dropped out a very light lander essentially a a glorified rocket pack which dropped our single astronaut down to the moon took a couple of samples with his portable oxygen tank and then flew back up to the uh, to the Gemini mission and went back to the earth so thank you very much I've been BLX Ed this has been Buzz Aldrin Space Program Manager and I will see you in the future for the bonus missions I guess the extra missions where we go to the remaining planets with space probes thank you very much I'll see you then